we are the guinea pig generation and I think it can actually harm people and I think what would have helped me to draw the line if there had been more education around what is you know sensible amount of usage for social media. Most of us know that we shouldn't be eating 15 kilograms of chocolate or drinking five bottles of vodka in a day. Even when we're placing financial bets, buying alcohol or food, we are constantly warned about the dangers of excessive use. But what about social media? Should we be concerned about how much we use it? As soon as you're bored, you go on it and just check it. So, um, yeah, a couple of hours a day. It's good for work. I find that very important. You can use it to promote yourself. You can use it to get somewhere. It becomes a bit obsessive, so you're like, you feel like you need to check it, like, oh, has something new happened, or what's going on? Some people are overusing it. I think they do. You know, you don't want to end up communicating with people on social networks or on the internet rather than face to face. Social media allows us to connect with people and ideas all over the world in a click of a finger. With 1.6 billion users, Facebook is the world's largest social media platform. One study shows that on average, we spend two hours per day on social media. That's equivalent to one entire month per year. So, why do we do this? So much of our social lives have now taken place on social media that we have developed a fear of missing out in conversation, creating events, and also starting a career. In fact, over a third of employers now use social media as part of their recruitment process, and a whopping 80% of 18 to 24 year olds use social media to find work. Before you know it, we spend hours on there. But the question is, what is this actually doing to our mental health? That's where the concept of social comparison comes in. Well, what I found in terms of my study is that the more time you spend on Facebook, the more likely you are to experience depressive symptoms. And the reason for that is because you're socially comparing yourselves to others. But we're not really seeing the full picture. We're not seeing all the ins and outs of their lives and all the negative things that they go through. We are only seeing the positive things because people naturally want to present themselves in a very positive light. Social comparison and other aspects of social media can also be quite addictive, as Danny Bowman can assess to. I started using social media platforms when I was around 13, 14 years old. What I believed was that the only way to be popular and the only way to, to have friends and, and be accepted in society was to be good looking. When you start to see yourself taking up to 100 selfies a day, you start to realise that actually there's something really wrong here. When I didn't get the comments I wanted, and I think I felt, you know, awful. You know, I felt like a failure. It made me feel really depressed. Um, you know, I couldn't leave the house for six months. and. I, you know, I think an experience like that really does change a person. Danny is far from alone here. When model Asana Anil left social media last year, it sparked a big debate on the potential damaging effects of social media on young people. I had the dream life. I had half a million people interested in me on social media. I had messages and messages of big companies, brands, sponsorships. I was surrounded by all this wealth and all this fame and all this power. And yet, they were all miserable, and I had never been more miserable. I don't even know what is real, what is not, because I've let myself be defined by something that is so not real. That was just living in a screen, wishing that people would value me, that people would hear me, that people would just know me. People are seeking validation all the time online. They're trying to get more followers, they're trying to get more likes. And I think for me, it was very hard to draw the line. I, I didn't know what was normal and what wasn't normal, and I think that's very common. So we asked the world's most widely used social media company, Facebook, about what their guidelines are regarding excessive use, how they would recognise it, if there's such thing as overusing Facebook, their policies, and if they plan to introduce new measures. They declined to comment. Social media companies work very hard to make sure we stay on their platforms. They depend on ad revenues, which means the more time users spend on their sites, the more money they make. But if this can be harmful to our mental health and difficult to recognise, it's going to be some conflict of interest between the users and the platforms. We are the guinea pig generation, and I think what would have helped me to draw the line if there had been more education around what is, you know, sensible amount of usage for social media. Young people now, I know people who take up to 300, 400 selfies a day, you know, a lot more than me even when I was at my worst. So we want to start a conversation about this. Mental health is still a taboo subject, but awareness is critical when finding a solution. So do you know a line you're weary of crossing when using social media? Let us know in the comment section below.
Remember, depression is a serious illness, so do consult a parent, teacher, doctor, or even the NHS 111 line if you suspect something's up. And if you're worried about a loved one's post, drop the emoji again and hit them up with some real face-to-face -face time. It occurs to Joe just how important the internet is for empowering millions of people to reach out to others, communicate ideas and even influence political change. So what does this mean?